So this next part of the morning is to run through a few different functional areas of ALMA. So I'm going to make a start by looking at resource management and acquisitions, and then my colleague Paula is going to follow on with fulfilment. And finally, Kingsley will talk about analytics. So resource management and acquisitions is the areas in ALMA that deal with the cataloguing and acquisition of resources. Um, and when we kicked off the project, this was the, one of the areas that um, I was the manager of. So um, a few fundamental principles of ALMA in relation to this area are the fact that print and electronic are administered in the one system. So previously, um, we had more than one system to do these areas of work. The type of order that you set up determines the workflow that follows. So if you're placing an order and it's for a print one-time resource, that drives a certain workflow. If you're placing an order for a subscription to an electronic package, that will drive for, through a whole new workflow of, of um, steps. So that's an um, important fundamental principle. The print record has holdings and items, whereas the electronic record has portfolios. And the community zone is the knowledge base plus shared records. Um, the institution zone, um, and th this difference will be talked about later by my colleagues in the, one of the breakout sessions, the institution zone is where you have your local records. So within ALMA, you can view community zone records and you can view your own institution zone records, and you just flip between the tab to view the different ones. So when it comes to migrating data, we migrated data from both ALIF and SFX. So SFX was our... Um, link resolver. We did have Verde for e-resource management, but we didn't have an awful lot set up in it, to be honest, so we decided that we wouldn't start migrating things from Verde. We decided we'd rather make a clean break of it, and this was with advice from Ex Libris as well. So we just concentrated on migrating data from Aleph and SFX. I say just, it wasn't a, an easy process. Um, a critical part of the migration and getting your head around what's what is getting something that's called the P to E file correct. Because that determines what is created in ALMA as an electronic um, record as opposed to a print record. So that was um, qu quite a lot of time was devoted to understanding that because we were one of the first, obviously one of the first libraries to do this. Not the first um, Aleph library by any stretch. I think we were the third. But still, I think during the process, as more libraries do it, you learn different things. So that is something key that you need to try and get right. When it comes to the, um, the area of cataloguing, um, colleagues tell me they found it fairly straightforward to adapt to. One of the benefits is that Library of Congress authority headings are included within ALMA. For us, a key improvement has been the bulk upload of MARC records. So where we have package subscriptions to eBooks, for example, the whole area of workflow around uploading um, a set of those mark records to ALMA is far quicker than it was um, on Aleph. So what used to take um, staff in, at York two or three days a month to deal with all these package updates um, and mark records now takes two to three hours a month. So there's been a big improvement there. The mark records in the community zone are as was mentioned earlier, of variable quality. So the serials ones tend to be better. They are at least CONSA standard, um, but the ebook ones generally are not great at the moment. So Ex Libris do, do know this, and there is um, a lot of effort being put in to try and get better quality records. But that explains why we still upload mark records from suppliers rather than just activating those that are in the community zone, because quite often there is only just a title or a and possibly an author, and that's it. So that's not good enough quality for us. So on the wish list of cataloguing, number one is better quality records. We also would like to see better linking between related records, and this is something that is a bit patchy. So when we have related records, what we call analytical records, but that's where you've got the parent-child relationships and that sort of side of things. They don't always link in the way that we would expect. Um, and again, this is something Ex Libris are actively working on at the moment. And we'd also like to see improved usability of authorities because um, 
if you just click on for more detail for an authority record from the Library of Congress, you see a fixed list of items that are returned and you can't scroll down to the bottom, you know, beyond the list that appears in front of you on the screen. So that, that's something in particular that we'd like to see improved. Now for ordering, um, just to say a bit about how we do ordering at York, we're not fully shelf ready. We have our own unique classification scheme, so we don't get shelf ready books from our suppliers. And what we do though is we think we've got quite a streamlined process. So we use EDI ordering, but at the point of order, we download a free catalogue record from the Library of Congress. And then we attach an order record to that, which is sent off to our suppliers via EDI. We don't use EOD, which stands for Embedded Order Delivery, which is a, um, a way of ordering that other Alma libraries do use. So that's where they place the order on the supplier's database and Alma receives a file from the supplier database which, could, which includes fulfillment information, so item records, as well as the bibliographic details. So we don't do that side of it, and that side of it was quite problematic to start with for some of the early adopter libraries. But the way we did EDI ordering and EDI invoicing was actually set up very quickly, so we had ordering going within a day or two of, of go live and invoicing very quickly after that. So that all worked well. Claiming is quite limited, so you can send a claim once for a one-off or um, continuous order, and, and thereafter it doesn't, Alma doesn't really handle follow-up very well. And we still need to input state order status reports from our suppliers manually. So in Aleph we'd set that up as an EDI process, but that isn't available in Alma yet. So we've had to revert to reporting um, on some things like not yet published or out of print um, that our suppliers send us, we have to input those manually into our order records. So our wish list for ordering is that we'd like to see more integration with vendor systems. So improved EDI functionality where appropriate or, and or better a more APIs. So for example, we've been beta testing some integration with SweatsWise which would allow us to order a new subscription on SweatsWise and for those details to then be transferred into Alma. So that would include things like all the Sweats order numbers and so forth. And then our order record, when that was created automatically by that process, would send back our order number and so forth into SweatsWise. So we've been doing some beta testing around that. We know we need to do local work to integrate with Aggresso, as has already been mentioned. What we'd also like to see from Ex Libris, and, and this is on the roadmap for 2015, is integration with Primo, so that, that would allow our users to actually um, fill out a suggestion form in Primo that, that would then create an order record in Alma. Um, and what would be really nice is for that to be able to then be transferred onto interlibrary loans. For example, if we decided not to order it, could it become an interlibrary loan request and vice versa? If somebody submitted an interlibrary loan request, could we make it into an order? So those are the sorts of things that we'd like to see. When it comes to activating e-resources, Alma works in a very similar way to SFX. It's fair to say that when we first went live a year ago, there wasn't very much in the way of documentation around this area. Um, and therefore, as a result, our, our understanding of what was happening in terms of activating new resources and managing them was quite limited because it hadn't really been covered particularly well in training either. But gradually we've got there and we've improved. Um, our understanding and the documentation has improved as well, which has been good to see. There are weekly reports which come out of changes to the knowledge base, which we go through um, and make changes in our institution zone as appropriate, or we, we activate things if, if they become available, that sort of thing. So we're doing that on a, on a weekly basis and trying to keep on top of it. So a wish list for e-resource management is that we'd like to see um, improved linking. So a minority of packages still use metadata to generate links rather than DOIs, and this can result in problems. Um, and we have reported this to Ex Libris and they are, they are actively working on phasing out the, the linking that uses, relies on metadata. So that's good. We 
have noticed that there can be delays in developing links to new platforms such as the Royal College of Nursing one for example and I'm sure this is a problem in, in SFX as well but it's, it's mirrored in, in Alma so we're having to wait quite a while to see um, new things that, to be set up which th this particular example is an issue because it means that um, article level linking isn't available for um, links that go th through to journals on this platform it's just title level and echoing what we always said about SFX we'd like to see better currency of information in the knowledge base so for things to be updated quicker in relation to um, say for example every year the, uh, um, the the years available to us on things like JSTOR change and it's it can seem to be a bit of a delay before there that is reflected um, in Alma and the same with changes to publisher packages and so forth So, in terms of other e-resource management issues, just to clarify for anyone who's thinking of going to an afternoon breakout session in this area, that we haven't yet got experience of these particular things. So we haven't yet set up licenses in Alma. We're actually waiting for machine-readable licenses to be introduced, because um, that will save us a bit of time in doing all that setup. So um, we're just hanging fire on that for the time being. We haven't done much investigation or to really tried to use the trials functionality because we're not convinced that it's going to save us a lot of time. So the, the jury's out on that one. Um, we haven't yet used PDA functionality. There is specific functionality within Alma to help you um, when you're running patient-driven acquisition, but we haven't yet done any pay PDA since we've had Alma. Still on the wish list for e-resource management is a better usage statistics tool. So USTAT is still there and we're still expected to use it. What we'd really like to see is integration with other tools like JUSP, the JISC service. Um, obviously we'd like reliable cost per download metrics. So they're still not available to us um, in Alma because of, you know, it's not everything's available in USTAT for a start. Um, and we haven't really got to grips with analytics in terms of giving us those, that cost per download information. We're not, we remain to be convinced that that will work for us in its current state. As far as budgeting and financial management goes, um, Alma works well. So there are three levels of budgets at the top level, a ledger. Then you have a summary fund and then an allocated fund. And we had no issues in setting up um, Alma to help us with this. We've done the financial year rollover recently at the end of July and that was a success, there were no problems there and it was even more straightforward than it was in Aleph, so nothing to worry about there. We have quite a good invoicing workflow set up which has, you can build in approvals at different stages and limit each step to a particular um, group of people if you wish, so that works well for us. Um, and it is possible to configure export to university finance systems once you're ready to do so. So obviously, top of our wish list is local integration with Agresso. Uh, 